All righty, there he is, ready to go. How you feeling, O? Feeling good? Right. I'm good, man. How are you been? Very good, very good. The listeners want to know something. Oh, uh, what do the listeners want to know? They want to know, are the Dolphins winning because you're no longer bothering them every day in the in the locker rooms? Absolutely. My presence is the magic elixir that makes the Dolphins a winning organization for the first time in 20 years with two exceptions. It's It was me. Without you. Without you is the elixir. They're better without me, just like every woman in my life. Better without me. <laughs> I, I am I am that toxic ex that just drains every bit of of happiness out of your life, and that's what I did for Dolphins fans for fifteen years. Canes too, put me blame me for their demise as well. Well, they still suck, so it doesn't matter. You covered them. I, they, when they were hey, I covered them when they were good, and then I left. Yeah. Oh, there you go. So that was the, see. You got to go back on the Canes beat. That's what it is, bro. Nah. That's it. You're the lucky one for the Canes. Oh, I, I I highly doubt that, considering how bad things have gone this year. Goodness gracious, I couldn't, I can't even, I couldn't even dream of how horrible and tragic the season would be for the Canes. Yeah, it's bad. It's bad, bro. It's bad. It's ugly. Mario's got a lot of work ahead of him. Hopefully, he'll get it done here. You know, uh, somebody was asking me about the running game, and we've talked about this in the off season that you were expecting the running game to kind of improve in the second half. And maybe it would have never happened, by the way, if you would have kept Chase Edmonds. But the fact that now you have Wilson Jr., who is a perfect complement to Mostert. Yeah. And Robert Jones is playing better, I think, than Liam Eikenberg at left guard. And then we have to say we never saw enough of Austin Jackson, although he was showing improvement in the offseason, but he doesn't have a resume to show us Consistently, well, Brendan Shell's done a very serviceable job at right tackle. These guys I don't make great. a single change to that offensive line based no, 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 on no, no. how they're I'm, playing. Right. I'm not asking that. But what I'm saying is they're better than they have been all year. They now have two backs that truly complement themselves. What you saw last week against the Browns, was it real or was it Memorex? It was a mirage. I, I would be I would be hmm a homer if I told you what they were able to do against the Browns can be replicated in the second half of the season consistently. That that was just fantasy land, fantasy numbers, um, holes that were, you know, the size of chasms. Okay, uh, but you don't, you don't expect them to be better the second half than they were the oh first Oh, yeah, half. but I expect the entire offense to be better the second half. Well, Think yeah, about but it. To do, but the passing game was already great. You had running. Yeah, but I, he's, I, I think he's ready to go to the next level. I, I never... There is a comfort that you get when you're in an offense and you've seen I, – I, I always said this, and I know I've said this to you. When every defense can throw what they're going to throw it to, and he's seen it before, and he knows how to adjust and react to it, that's when he's going to take off. Yep. That's when he's really going to, you know, really show you what he has. There's a there, – you know, the things about Tua that's always stood out is accuracy – pocket presence and the it factor in terms of the ability to make those big clutch throws like we've seen a little bit of it but we haven't seen it at yes he's been amazing for the last three weeks been stellar for most of this season but if you asked him i think he'd probably tell you i'm just getting comfortable in this offense and in what these deep what the defenses are doing to me and what i'm seeing it doesn't happen overnight. Remember, Patrick Mahomes said, admitted he won a championship without knowing how to read defenses. Like that, you know, that that's the reality of it. It doesn't happen overnight. And while fans think it does, um, that's just not reality. And yeah. I think Tua, I've always said the second half of this season is when this offense would would get would catch, get themselves into a groove. And I still believe that. But you know, obviously Teron Armstead's presence is 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 a major key factor towards that and the continued growth and development of the offensive line. You know, anybody who's following me knows it starts with the trenches. And if the trenches are good, you're going to give yourself a chance. Yeah, no, I'm with you there. You, and you said it all, all throughout the off season before you, uh, before you left us that you expected the running game to get better in the second half of the season, which makes a lot of sense. Uh, although again, if Eichenberg is still at left guard, and if Chase is still running with, I don't know if it really works out. I think Wilson 
is an enormous difference maker compared to Chase. I, I'm wondering what Chase is doing he's since he's been company. traded. Because uh, uh, it, it, it hasn't been good. It hasn't been good, bro. We, we've, okay. we've, we've been keeping up with it. It hasn't been very productive. He, you know, and he's a talented uh, guy. What, what, talented what actually, just didn't what play. Wait, Sean was going to say something. It was uh, two carries for nine yards. Nine yards, yeah. along of ten. Right. Yeah. They had one yard for ten, and then he lost half a yard on another on another play. And he had one uh, reception for zero yards. And by the way, Omar, you're a thousand percent right. He's a damn good player. Okay, he was a good player. It's just sometimes, dude, schemes don't fit you. Sometimes so, environments right. don't fit you either. Right. Robert, exactly. Robert Quinn right. was not good here. At, under any circumstances, Robert Quinn was not good here. I think there were too many distractions here in South Florida. And maybe Chase Edmonds dealt with that as well. And sometimes this is not the environment for a guy. It, yeah. it just isn't. The environment. If you, is, if you can't keep your eyes off the hotties, South right. Florida ain't where you need to be. Well, it could be environment. It could be scheme. It could be coaching. You know, whatever, bro. I mean, just some things. I mean, hey, look, with, with flow around, you had no offense. With Mike McDaniel, you have the best offense. So, you know, wow. Yeah, it's just, well, those are facts. Those are facts. I mean, hey, hey listen, always. facts. Tariq Hill, too. Don't forget that. Yeah, well, they, Tariq, I, Waddle, it doesn't matter, bro. They're all productive. Shurfield last year, last week, he, you know, I don't know if you saw it. His quarterback rating to guys that aren't named Tyreek and, and Waddle is like 101 or something. It's yeah, stupid. but a lot of extra attention stupid. goes to, to Jalen Waddle. He, he is the... I, I argue this all the time, and I argued this before the season even began. He's the NFL's best offensive weapon. Not that's not named a quarterback, because he can do so many things, and his speed is just ridiculous, off the charts. Um, you know, and yes, the the Kansas City Chiefs they they've adapted, they've adjusted. Their offense has been diversified, but let's not pretend like Tyreek Hill isn't a, a, a secret weapon. Of course. No, he's an obvious weapon. There's no secret there. Yeah, Seriously. yeah, yeah, yeah. I mean, it's just fun watching defensive backs. Like, they they cannot come up on his face because if they do, they, he's gone, bro. He's gone. He's going to I, I, I remember when seven, I – Seven, eight, ten yards. It's like, holy crap, they're giving him all this space. They fear that dude. I mean – I remember when we were watching in training camp and I saw some of the formations and the stuff that they were doing. Remember, they opened up every training camp practice with a completion of Tyreek. Right. He was usually put in motion, and basically the defensive backs, when they saw him in motion, was like, retreat, retreat, retreat. There's nothing we could do, and then he's out there running option routes. Like, you can't stop that. There's nobody who can stop that because nobody can stick with him one-on-one, -on -one, and then he's running option routes, so he's just running to the open space on the field. Right, exactly. It's, yeah, it's, right. it's brilliant. It is. It's, uh, it's amazing. By the way, um, pretty uh, – the, the, the Dolphins right now – are the only team in the NFL that's got two players that are in the MVP race, a candidate for executive of the year, a candidate for head coach of the year, and at seven and three, you could say they're a Super Bowl contender right now because it's, yeah. not, it's not like Kansas City and Buffalo are heads and you know heads above them, way up, way above them. Miami could beat those teams. They could hang with those teams. Now, should they be favored? Of course, Kansas City and Buffalo should be favored. But, you know, think about all those categories. If Cincinnati can make it in, why can't these Dolphins? We're better than the Cincinnati Bengals last year. Amen. Um, Many times. And, and and it's true. It's it's fair and reasonable to say if you if you added up all the teams that are that have the best records, let's say take the top six teams, Minnesota. Even throw in Dallas, Philadelphia, San Francisco, um, Buffalo, Kansas City. Throw in Tennessee if you want. Um, you could, you could you, uh, throw in Miami. Throw, even throw in the Jets. The Dolphins have a just as mild of a chance to beat any of those teams that as those teams have to beat them. So they are a Super Bowl contender. They, 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 the way that they're built is built to play in the playoffs right now. And they just got to continue to juice up that run game. Yeah, if that running game is working like it was uh, this past week, uh, then yeah, you're gonna be you're gonna be you're gonna be a, a a load. Can you imagine Tua and Mike McDaniel with a run game? Because that then we'll finally see. Like we saw this past week. That's what I told everybody. This is what Mike McDaniel's offense is supposed to look like. Finally, it took the week ten. 
But th- when they have a running game, that's going to be Mike McDaniel's offense. I, I'm more concerned about the defense, and I'm more concerned about special teams than I am the offense, which tells you exactly what, all you need to know about what Mike McDaniel's has done because we've spent the last 20 years stressing and obsessed about the offense, and now the tide has turned to the point where – we got to figure out a way to get the defensive players and the defensive unit playing on one accord and playing a little bit better. And, and guys like Jalen Phillips and, 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 uh, Chubbs to pin their, and Melvin Ingram to pin their ears back and hunt the quarterbacks when they have a lead, which Tua should be able to get them a lead. Yeah. It's just, here's the thing. I think I've been telling fans this, um, for, for 25 years, you've been programmed that the defense bails out the offense. (laughs) <laughs> well, that that's that's changed. You no longer can count on Jason Taylor and Cam Wake and Jones or yeah. Madison or whatever. Make Even Xavier Howard right now. Solely I make a play. You know, no, those days are done. That it's your defense. It's your offense that's going to bail out your defense. Plus, Omar, I have to be fair, bro. You've lost so many guys in your secondary, and you've done a marvelous job of, of, of putting in guys that are at least filling in and doing a respectable job. Masking it, but, yeah. But, 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 dude, you, you, you're not going to make up Brandon Jones and, 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 uh, and, and Byron Jones, unfortunately. And so it's hard. And, and X is also not even 100%. Yeah. So I, I just have a hard time demanding perfection. I almost am telling fans that you're going to have a defense that is going to bend. You just hope they do what they've done in the years past. They don't break like in the in the Chicago game. They were bending all over, and then at the end of the game, they finally made some plays, and Duke Riley made a big play, and they got a big stop and all that, and they yeah. got the game. You know what I'm saying? I, I just kind of think that that's the defense. Oh, I really do. I, I don't – You, I don't you know, you know if, if the Eagles can go out there and see what their issues are and reinforce their defensive line by summoning and Dominic and Sue and Linville Joseph – there's got to be cornerbacks out there that you can get off the street that can come in. One that can come in and help you if you're not going to get Byron Jones back. There, there's got to be somebody out there who can help you. Well, right now, right now, Kohu's doing a really nice job, and and uh, the Bethel, the the Justin Bethel kid had a hell of a game this past week. His speed has been all over the place making plays. So I think they're all right there. Oh, where I disagree with you is they, they got to pick up the, the pass rush, which, by the way, with the Ogba injury, it kind of felt like Chubb really, like, put it on another gear after after Ogba went out, and, and I thought he had his best week compared to the week before. I think the real key to mask that secondary, they've got – they've got and you talk, just talked about it. Those guys have to get after the quarterback, dude. They got, they got to cover better, too, because it, the coverage leads to sacks, and – you know, I, I, I say this all the time. I'd never covered a Dolphins team where they didn't need six cornerbacks to make it through a season. Obviously, you're you're probably at six right now. Um, I just feel like they are they're one short. They're one more short. And by the way, they're they're playing with five, six, seven, and eight. You do yes. that. Right? As soon five, as they get seven, that eight. one back. Okay. As it's, they, it's X, Byron, Needham, and Trill Williams. Those were your top four. And now you're playing with five, six, seven, eight. That's Noah, a, yeah. No, he's nine. <laughs> he's nine now at this point. I mean, it's just it's bad, bro. It's bad. The, what you're what, what you've got out there. You know what I'm saying? It's just and, and actually I gotta say, considering it all, I love what I've seen from Kohu and 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 I give the Justin Bethel kid a lot of credit. It's the Elijah kid and then Noah, and you know, that and then it starts to get to but it Oh, how many people are we going to ask them to go find? <laughs> you know, you found Trill, you found Kohu, you found Bethel, and you know, it's like how many? Hey, listen, it could be that it could be that one roster move that prevents you from making it to the Super Bowl. That's that's the way I look at it. And, and I'm sorry, Chris Greer, you've done an amazing job. Don't let your secondary hold you back. Yeah, I think they probably tried also in the in the in the. Uh, in the deadline to make a move, but it was. It yeah, was I mean, I, I still think tough. that if the Dominican Sue's out there cherry picking a team, there's there's somebody out there from a cornerback position standpoint trying to cherry pick to find a contender. Well, I can't. It, let me make another point here. If it's something that those guys do in that in that front office, they know how to find secondary guys. 
So yeah. if, they have, if they haven't found another one, I mean, it's got to be pretty dried up over there. You know what I'm saying? Because you could easily pick somebody from a practice squad, and they haven't done that either. That's true. So, so but somebody, then you got to make you got to make that commitment to keeping a guy for four weeks. Um, I don't know if that that's a very good point. That's a very good point. I'm looking now. I just have you know. Oh, I just got to give them the benefit of the doubt because they've been so exceptional finding DBs and safeties that th this is one of their strengths actually. So if they're having trouble finding another guy, I got to think it's, you know, it's pretty tough sledding right now because there's been so many injuries, you know, in the league. Yeah. So that's, that's the other thing. I'm, I'm, I'm looking that, up, I'm looking up guys we now. Just had, we just had an XFL draft yesterday too. <laughs> yeah. But, but even like, I'm trying to see if Chris Harris Jr. is playing right now. Um, Somebody like that, not to say that I don't well, know. Yeah, he's in New Orleans. He's what, apparently Janoris, in New Orleans. I don't think Janoris Jenkins signed with anybody. I don't think – Yeah, uh, that, and that, that's one of the guys Joe that I – I don't think Joe Hayden signed with anybody. There you go. Um, and, I, you know, I know there's some guys out there, but I – I mean, I don't know. I don't know where they're at. I don't know where they're at health-wise. I don't know where they're at physically, all those kind of things, as you know. You know, at this point, if they're not taking care of themselves – that's that's a tough person to bring in, you know. Uh, yeah, uh, but you don't know that. You you could take a look at Janoris Jenkins and and um and Joe Hayden. I, I'm just saying that that's the one position that it looks to me like if it's always going to be the weakness, it's always going to be what holds you back from maximizing your potential. Um, I said that from the beginning of training camp, and I, and I remain consistent about it. And hopefully they, they'll figure out a way to address it or, or somebody at Coho will get drastically better. And we'll see. Uh, Mr. Bonafide861 sent us a super chat. And he says, Omar, remember with Flores, Ben struggled to stop the run. With Boyer, they struggled to stop the pass with mostly the same team. What's changed? Well, with Boyer, everybody's injured in the secondary, my brother. How are you going to say that? Uh, I, 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 I would say this. Here. I mean, and Brandon Jones is out now. That's an enormous – those are two enormous losses for this secondary. And then Needham's out. That's your that's your slot. So you're missing you're missing three of your top players in your secondaries. That, that's not a that's not a fair comment on your part, Mr. Bonafide. But you go ahead, Omar. Yeah, but and and opponents are averaging four point six yards per carry. And I know Dolphin fans will tell you, oh, that's because of the scrambling quarterbacks. And I'm like, okay, sure. That's true. It is true. The, it, running it backs, the running backs don't kill them. You can do. You can put all the running backs together. You'll see they don't kill them. It's Lamar. It's uh. It's Justin Fields. And uh, was there one more guy that got a bunch of yards? Oh, the running back, the the Brees Hall. Brees Hall. Yeah, Brees Hall. Brees Hall's a stud. But uh, you know, giving up yards to Brees Hall is not something surprising. If you watch that kid play, I know it's the Jets, but I got to give them credit, bro. They found themselves a freaking stud. I kick and play. He's a stud. So is that team? That Jets team, pretty good team. Yeah, I don't. I don't buy the quarterback. Yeah, I'm, I'm not I can understand where you're coming from. I'm not, I'm not buying the quarterback, doggy. That's that's one thing that I'm not buying. Uh, all right, so we haven't talked about enough about Tua. Uh, your your thoughts now at the level that he's playing right now? Efficient, just like him and Mike McDaniel talked about. There's just a level of efficiency that's no wasted plays, no unnecessary sacks, third down conversions. And I know they're third down conversions. I looked at it earlier and it wasn't that impressive, but it's pretty impressive with two as a starting quarterback. Uh, he's just playing at an efficient level right now. That's hard to match. If you, you, you could, you could talk all you want about there being another quarterback who's out there playing better than, um, better better than Tua, but there isn't. Not even Patrick Mahomes, not my Josh McDaniels, um, certainly not Geno Smith. Uh, nobody's playing at Tua's level right now, and and hopefully that continues for him. Yeah, and, and listen, uh, MVP talk is legit, right? Yeah, no. Uh, I've, I've sat and I've watched and I've listened to a lot of people say Tua is in the MVP conversation this week, and and I hope it's not an about face opportunity to say, see, when I told you when when he starts to, when he loses a game, um, finally this season, I think he silenced majority of his critics. 
Uh, props to you for never wavering, being on that tour train and to an on board member. Uh, everybody who's a member of two and on you can you can gloat and you can you can tip your cap and you could say i was right and he was never the problem that's what i kept saying i'm sorry but he's never the problem bro i i, I don't know I've if only, he's I've only, I've only worried about injuries with that young man that's it that's the only thing that would scare me off of him uh, outside of that i never wavered that he wasn't that he was a player he's always been a player bro too accurate bro the it factor is just there just there and you 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 see right now it's easy to see the comparisons to Drew Brees it's very easy he's Montana not Brees but go ahead that's fine that's fine I'm going with Montana that's what I that's what I'm going with that's my guy there I think he's he's a lefty Montana is what yeah, he is. maybe I, so, I look at it from Quick decisions, accuracy, I, and I love the offense. So the movement, the play action, the rollouts, love it. Love everything about it. Always loved it. Yeah, McDaniel is wow, right? Okay, when you think about all the crap that you you covered here, and then you see this guy, right? It's just at another complete level, right? It's just amazing. I'm I'm not. I like McDaniel, and I want to buy in so bad. Um, it, the problem is I've just never seen anything like this. It's so unorthodox. You want to, <laughs> you need a bigger sample size. To real to be true at, at the moment for you. It's like, damn, this is too good. It's okay. It's, something's going to happen here. Right. Is, is that what you're saying? He, he's the homie. He's like the homie coach in your team. Like you call him Mike. Everybody calls him Mike. Like the, what the, coach? The, no, like, he, uh, uh, Tua calls him beast. I don't know that. Yeah. Oh yeah, yeah. You, did you see the ten minute video of Tua on the sidelines? And uh, I did. The well, then he was on the sidelines, and he's and he goes, uh, "What's up, Beast?" He was talking to uh, Magic Mike that way. He was like, um, or Ma Magic Mac or something. What is it? What is it? What he calls him Magic Mac or something, and he called him Beast at the same time. Check it out. Listen, good. He calls him Beast. I thought that was, by the way, and this is for me again another narrative that was out there. That he wasn't sociable, and he was he was very sociable in in Alabama. He just got cock blocked here, and now he's allowed to be himself now, man. He still came across very awkward in that in that mic'd up. He still came across like, oh, I've never given a speech without stuttering, and right. you know, I saw where he avoided giving giving the, the giving a speech, but even though everybody asked him for a speech. He's it's not a still, speech guy. He's not a speech guy. Dude, Zach Thomas wasn't going to give you a speech either, my brother. Okay? Zach was not about speeches. Zach was about playing the game, being a leader, and if you came for him for some knowledge, he's going to share the knowledge with you, but he wasn't going to stand in the middle of a, of a locker room and raw, raw guys and all that shit. That wasn't his style. Some guys are like that, dude. They're not, they're not talkers like that. You know what I mean? They, they connect individually, and that's what he does. He connects originally with them. I'm just happy to see him coming into his own, feeling more comfortable. Um, you know, they're they're taking names, so you know they they've silenced a lot of their critics. They they he's playing with a swagger and a confidence that you can't really buy. That's just you know that that he's playing at an elite level, and as long as he continues to stay healthy and his line protects him, I don't think that that changes. It's yeah. certainly if he has a weaponry to get it done. Yeah, I'm with you there, man. Uh, he's and I, I'm excited for him now. If the running game really comes together and yeah. they have a consistent running game, this offense is going to be unfreaking stoppable. If 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 defenses now have to worry about stopping the running game too, that's crazy, man. That that's going to be a monster advantage. And think about this: they haven't had this in forever, bro. Not even in the Marino era, they had a running game. So if you actually have a coach, a front office, a quarterback, and a running game, I don't know. The last time you had that was in the 70s. Yeah. That's how that's how long it's been. Oh. Let's get a defense too. Special teams. Kick it that can make two goals. Special teams makes me that's what that see, that's one that I I'm not so nervous about the defense because I know they're going to give up some points, but I they find ways to make plays. So I, I know who they are. But, dude, when it comes to special teams, I don't have any confidence there, bro. I don't have any confidence. They don't have a returner. 
They don't have a consistent kicker. Uh, I'm, I'm, and they didn't bring any kickers in. I thought at least you would bring. You know, they lost Ben Stilley this week to the Browns, and maybe you would bring in and steal a kicker from somewhere, a young kicker to at least start to try to see if you can develop them, and and, and bring in some competition for for the kicker. But they didn't even do that. So I guess they're, I guess they they're giving him another, you know, the chance to vote of confidence, baby. Yeah. Yep. All right. What do you got going on? I am athlete, man. Tell the folks. Just we're, we're working on a new project called I am. We continue to work on that and, and getting ready for the Atlanta tour on December the 1st. So that's what we got going on. Uh, Atlanta. What's, what's the, what does that mean? Atlanta tour? We have tour dates where we're doing live performances of the show in, in different cities and Atlanta is going to close out the, uh, uh, They'll probably try to do this to 1.0, which is the t- name of the tour. Okay. All right. Sounds good. Uh, somebody sending in a super chat. We'll close it with this. Rhinos is asking, great show. What are the top NFL five, the five top NFL teams right now? Well, let's go Eagles. Kansas, let's go Kansas City and Eagles for sure. Eagles, Kansas City. Do we put Minnesota uh, in there? Because no, I I'm gonna put okay, Buffalo okay. ahead of Minnesota. I'm gonna put Buffalo? Miami there, and then I'll probably put Minnesota. Okay, I'm good with that. San I'm Fran is that. up yeah. there too. Yeah, I'm not. I'm not. And you know what? I'll put San Fran ahead of Minnesota uh, because they can run the ball and they've got a defense. I'll put San Fran in front of Minnesota uh, overall. And then, and then, by the way, the sixth one, maybe even ahead of them. Do you do you put the Giants in front of them? I love Dable, but I don't know if that's sustainable. Okay. I think you're you're playing a very weak division. And I I love your style. We'll see. Good job. He's done a good job. He's done a good job. An excellent job. Daniel Jones is still Daniel Jones. Right, right. But at least he's won with Daniel Jones, which is amazing. He's proven to you that he's a good coach. I want to ask you one more thing before I let you go. Now I forgot. Um, Ken Dorsey. Uh, Josh Allen, because Dable left. Josh yep. Allen is not playing well. He's mm-hmm. got ten touchdowns and and ten interceptions right now. He's got uh, what was what was the stat I pulled up? Three touchdowns in the last three games and six interceptions. In the last three games, he's only got a 54, 57.4 completion percentage. Um, is this a bad look for Ken Dorsey? No, it's a quarterback who's hit a rough patch in the season and a team that's hit a rough patch in the season, they'll overcome it. They'll get it together. Okay. This isn't a, a, a Josh, I mean, Josh Allen spent most of this year as the MVP front runner. So he's going to get back there eventually. I like what Matt Verderam said. He, he did the math. They're using him for 84% of the offense because they can't run the ball. And he's running too. I, I think I, I agree with Matt on this. They're putting too much on his plate, and yep. that's why he's making mistakes and he's wearing down, and uh, and he's got the elbow injury and everything. I think that's what's happening. As great as he is, you cannot put the entire weight of the world on one person though in the offense. And they yeah, they need they need to find a run again. They can't run the ball, bro. They yeah, cannot run the ball. Green Bay started doing better when they started running the ball effectively, and the, and the, and the um, Buffalo Bills they got to do the same thing. The game just got moved to Detroit. I know, I know, and and not only that, you're putting him running the ball, and you're putting him at risk for injury because he's taking hits that he doesn't have to take hits. He's a huge I don't care man, how though. I, I don't care how big he is, bro. They'll break you in half either way. All right. Omar, thank you as always, my brother. Follow him on Twitter at Omar Kelly and catch him every week right here, man, with the Essential Moving Experts.com, Miami Dolphins Exchange. Omar, thank you, my brand, my brother. I appreciate you. All right. Talk to you later. You got it. Omar Kelly. All right. It's a beautiful thing. I like that uh, top five. And don't forget uh, Essential Moving Experts. Mention my name, you get $150 off. If you go over 3000 I believe it's $250, uh, the discount they'll give you if the move is over $3,000. Call them, 844-368-5750. Long home moving services, office uh, relocation, flat rates, no surprise charges. Over, I think like 1,700 customers already have said that they love essential moving experts because moving was never so easy. Call Sean Williams and the folks and tell them that Big O sent you 
anywhere in the country, 844-368-5750. And check out the website. You'll see big Dolphins fans. Everything is in aqua and orange. That is your essential moving experts, Miami Dolphins Exchange. This is the Big O Show. This is the Big O Show.